Okay, uh, so hello everyone. My name is Florin. I'm with Adobe Engineering working on AM, and I'll be presenting um, some thoughts about upgrading an AM cluster using Docker. So, um, you know, historically, AM kind of supports uh, a cluster deployment for some time now, but it's a bit challenging. So we'll be discussing first um, what are the current challenges with our arch architecture and using it in a cluster setup. Um, how Docker can help us to mitigate some of the challenges. What uh, Oak Composite Node Store um, uh, does to help us out achieve uh, this Docker uh, deployment and um, some challenges and mitigations for upgrading AM in the cloud, uh, basically using the Docker image. So, okay, first of all, what are, are our current uh, challenges? Now, as you know, um, we currently already support some kind of a shared repository that you can uh, uh, point, let's say, more than one AM instance to, but um, the problem is uh, with AM, with the way we're using that repository. So first, it's, it's a very large monolithic application, so it doesn't really play nice with uh, uh, starting it really fast or uh, uh, uploading uh, work to other instances. So basically, that's one of the challenges. Uh, the other one is that, okay, we have a shared repository, but if you have more than one instance, that's basically reuse, uh, more than one AM instance. That's basically uh, well, you're reusing. Everybody's using the same repository. So if something changes from one instance, that's automatically propagated and noticed by the others, which in a cluster deployment obviously makes it a bit difficult to hold the whole management and the upgrading and the orchestration. Uh, and there's, then there's the upgrade. We have a lot of, uh, we already had some discussions about upgrading. Well, upgrading a cloud is uh, really hard <laughs> because of the fact we are actually reusing that repository for everybody. And uh, as a consequence, if you don't have the option to have like a longer maintenance window, uh, it's going to make this achieving zero downtime almost impossible. So. Now, this is the way it kind of works now. So we have a bunch of AM instances all tied to the same uh, MongoDB repository. That's an example. The external storage is uh, uh, external. It is, uh, can be shared, but it's the same. So we have problems. Now, how can Docker help us out here? Uh, we can mitigate some of the challenges. We will have other challenges, but at least we will be able to deploy to the cloud easier. Now, internally, um, we are researching on uh, how to build a AM uh, image with Docker. And, uh, you know, this is not really uh, news for, let's say, the deploying to the cloud. Docker is really widely being employed for these kind of deployments. And the, having a Docker image with AM will really help us out. Uh, because it's going to be easier to customize uh, uh, any uh, instance. Basically, we will be able to more easily apply a, a application customizations on top of the base AM. Build would be faster. You will be using, should be using Maven to easily apply those customizations and end up with like a, your own custom image. And, of course, this is continuous deployment friendly if you want to have like a pipeline and build stuff uh, with a CI-CD pipeline. So now, assuming we have a Docker container for AM, this is what it would look like. You will notice that 
the repository looks a bit weird, and I'll discuss more in the next slides. Now, with Docker, we're still using an external uh, storage system, but it's a bit special. We'll be using composite node store, which means that the repository is basically split into multiple parts, much like the Unix uh, or Linux mounts uh, work, right? So you have uh, a part that's basically formed by libs or apps, which is separate, and everything else. And the, the libs or apps uh, stuff is stored in the Docker image, whereas everything else will be stored in a, as before in a shared, uh, shared service. Um, <clears throat> the thing is that with this setup, we will have some restrictions applied to the local repository. And what are those? Uh, the challenge comes from the fact that the libs or apps part will be baked in the Docker image. So uh, they will be basically immutable at runtime. Those will be picked up by the build process and welded into the Docker image. They'll be immutable, so you won't be able to change them at runtime. <laughs> um, the, the next two are kind of a consequence of the first ones. Maybe at first they're not really uh, obvious, but we need, I need to state them out. So you don't have changes to libs or apps at runtime, so there's no re-indexing at runtime. The, the, the good part here is that uh, for the indexing side, that can be pre compiled at the build time, so you don't really need uh, re-indexing during the runtime. And the, the, the third aspect is that there will be no repository eventing for, for these uh, for this paths. It's also kind of intuitive, since there won't be any changes to, to libs or apps, but uh, if uh, the application is relying on that, uh, they, it might run into problems. Now, composite node store. Um, it will be essential for, for this uh, type of um, deployment because the composite node store is the one that actually helps us out to uh, have this separation between two repositories. Uh, it theoretically supports more than two, but at least in our uh, investigations, we're using two. One with, which is basically private to the Docker instance and all the rest. So uh, this is its primary uh, function. It's, it will allow uh, the repository to be split into multiple mount points. Uh, the other one would be that um, it will help us mitigate one of the challenges. So if at the beginning, uh, one of the issues was that the whole repository was being shared between all the instances, now each instance can have its own private local libs and apps. And Basically, upgrading in this context would mean uh, you don't have a jar that you just drop there and uh, the upgrade process started. You just replace the, the, the Docker container altogether, and you will end up with a new version running. OK, so um, now upgrading, like I said, will not look the same in a cluster setup. and also because of Docker and the composite node store. What does upgrading in a cluster mean? So if you want to upgrade a cluster, you basically have an initial state with uh, uh, a bunch of AM versions, let's call them version one, and uh, you kick off an upgrade, and then at some point you just end up with the whole cluster running another version of AM. So, okay. What are the problems? You, you cannot use the normal upgrade anymore. So uh, up until now, you would just uh, maybe drop another jar uh, in the same location as the old one. Uh, AM would automatically detect, OK, I'm now upgrading. I have an older repository. Uh, the upgrade tasks will kick in, which in some cases, as you've seen, will maybe take a couple of days. And at the end, you would end up with an upgraded uh, instance, if you are lucky. Well, you cannot do that anymore because um, if, assuming you have more than two instances, if you just kick off the upgrade uh, tasks at the moment you switch the first one, you will end up with a, a bit of a chaos there because all the others are, are still running the older version. 
So the normal upgrade mode will not, no longer work with this setup. Uh, then there's the other aspect. You have two repositories, one that's local, one that is shared. When you uh, upgrade the instance, you basically automatically upgrade the libs and apps side, meaning the private repository which is stored with Docker. But what happens with the shared repository content? It's more or less the same with the first aspect. I mean, you cannot kick off the upgrade process at the moment the first instance gets switched to the newer version because then you might end up into problems with all the others that are still running the older version. Uh, this is also tied to the compatibility of the shared repository content because obviously if the new application version starts creating stuff that the other ones don't know how to handle or read or write, you might end up with big errors, so you won't be able to upgrade that safely. And there's, in this context, there's also the rollback uh, aspect. If at some point you decide that, everything, uh, that something has gone horribly wrong and you want to revert, uh, you may end up into issues because of the fact that the shared repository is shared well. OK. so. First aspect, there's no up explicit upgrade mode. Uh, upgrade tasks will no longer work uh, because there will be no upgrade mode at the moment you are dropping, uh, we are start kicking off the cluster upgrade process. You cannot rely on the upgrade tasks, which, as you know, usually were kicked off at the moment uh, AM detected its upgrading. The local repository is automatically updated because uh, that's stored with the image, so you don't really need to take care of anything there. But for the rest of the repository, uh, you kind of need uh, some kind of deferred process that will maybe kick off once the whole cluster has been upgraded. So you can do it right off the way. You kind of need to wait a bit until everyone runs the same version. Now, for the shared repository side, uh, new content, that's not really a problem since assuming, well, nobody's really using it. So that can use the same approach just as before. For existing content, uh, however, uh, as already mentioned, you would want to use a deferred approach, maybe kicking it off once everyone or maybe critical mass of the cluster is running the new version. But you will need both backwards and forwards compatibility to ensure that you don't uh, end up into a bigger problems here. Um, the thing is that, obviously, backwards compatibility is good. So you, when you start installing new versions, you might want for them to be able to handle the older content so they don't cause issues while, kicking, while starting up. And on the other hand, it would be nice that the older versions to kind of be forwards compatible. So uh, during an upgrade, you may end up in a situation where part of the cluster has, is running one version and the other one another version. So it would be nice that uh, the older version to handle gracefully any content models that uh, it does not know how to process, or at least not break if it does not understand them. Now, the rollback. This is also uh, a bit of a problem. <laughs> Since you're using Docker, the private repository is automatically uh, rolled back if you want to install another version. So you install uh, version 2, you see it's breaking. OK, you just put, drop in version 1 then. You have the older libs and apps, no problem whatsoever. But what happens to the, to the shared repository? Uh, and assuming that some time has passed until, uh, since the cluster has been upgraded, you might, may end up with some content that uh, the older version doesn't know how to process. That's why forward compatibility would be nice here. So the, the guideline would be, OK, uh, we just uh, avoid reverting. So you don't do anything. You just leave the stuff as is and rely on forward comp compatibility so the, the older application version doesn't break. But this, not might, this not, would, may not be possible all the time. Uh, 
One other option would be to kind of try to roll back to a label or a revision. But the issue is that here, this will may, may incur data loss, which obviously you do not really want. And the, the, late, the last resort would be to restore the stuff from backup, which will incur both data loss and maybe a maintenance window. Uh, and depending on the SLA, you may not have that time to spend. Now, uh, a couple of guidelines. So obviously using a Docker image uh, would mitigate some of the challenges, uh, especially with the ones that uh, relay, uh, are basically about deploying to the cloud. But at the same time, we kind of have new challenges uh, because of the way we need to deal with the resulting architecture of the system. So I, I'll try to summarize a bit uh, some takeaways. <coughs> Now, uh, the application and the content repository will need to be adapted to, to deal with this new setup. So everything needs to be aligned with the way we're leveraging the composite node store. Uh, Leaps and apps will be read-only and private to each instance. And this is really important. They will only be changeable by deploy time. So no runtime changes because they are embedded in the Docker image. They are mostly for uh, bundles, scripts, uh, default configs anyway, based on the separation of content and apps uh, guidelines that uh, we discussed about a while ago. And uh, obviously, it may be that they need adaption for the cases where uh, writing at runtime is assumed there. The shared repository is basically all the rest where uh, upgrade tasks are not recommended. And uh, yes, I just mentioned that before. The, the, we need, this needs a clear separation of uh, application content like scripts, uh, bundles, and so on, and user-generated content or stuff that can be uh, edited at runtime. For upgrading in the cloud, um, you need to choose your deployment type wisely. <laughs> uh, based on the way you want to uh, update your instance, you have more or less restriction in terms of what you can and cannot do. So maybe do you have the option of a maintenance window or not? Uh, maybe you want to do rolling deployments or canary releases, or uh, blue-green. Uh, they all have their own particulars, and uh, kind of, it, they will impact on what you can and cannot do. Backwards compatibility. Avoid, avoid backwards incompatible changes as much as possible. You may not be able to do that in all the cases, <clears throat> but uh, if you are able to do that incrementally, this may, may be mitigated. When this is not possible, you can use asynchronous content updates and avoid rollbacks also, if possible, that it's really, really bad. Now, as you know, as I already did this, uh, let's say, teaser on Monday, we have a Docker beta program access. Unfortunately, I kind of uh, underestimated the time it will take to get you guys access. Um, there's a, a 6.4 SP1 Docker image, Docker file, and some documents and samples. Um, thanks a lot for the ones that have already showed interest. I, can, I have a bunch, uh, about 30 requests, which I already forwarded to the team handling the Docker beta program access. If you want to request access, those need to go through me. Uh, I do not know how long it will take, unfortunately. But uh, the team that managing the Docker access promised that they will reach out to each and every one and uh, discuss how this can be achieved. And as references, if you guys want to check out the o o Composite Node Store, you can check it out on uh, Apache. And uh, that would be it from my side. If there are no questions, thank you, Florine. Thank you.